It's been a while, but we're back in South Bend at the Potawatomi Zoo. Last time we were here, we saw rhinos, okapi, monkeys, a wild great blue heron, and the zoo's new giraffes as we toured Africa, which makes up a majority of the zoo's right side. Moving over to the left side of the zoo, today we'll be walking through the Americas. I don't know much about the construction of this area, but it does feature around 15 habitats exhibiting animals from both North and South America, including some species that aren't commonly seen at other Midwest zoos. Like last episode, stay to the end for some updates on what's coming for this area in the future. And with that short intro, let's get right to it. We'll begin our journey today where we left off at the new Giraffe Conservation Center. A short walk brings us to the first exhibit, added in 2011 for a very popular zoo animal, the North American River Otter. The zoo is home to four, Sam, Shadow, Francis, and Wildcat. North American river otters are very adaptable, with a large range that spans most of Alaska and Canada, as well as large portions of the eastern and northwestern United States. Throughout their range, they can be found living in almost every type of habitat, except for deserts and tundra. While they may live alone or in pairs, river otters are known to socialize in larger groups, often engaging in playful behavior, which is believed to help strengthen social bonds and can help improve hunting skills. Their exhibit here includes a green roof, which was the first of its kind to be constructed in the South Bend area. Straight ahead is a simple yet spacious yard that together with a couple other habitats makes up a sort of central circle for the Americas. In here you can find the American bison, the largest land mammal in North America with adult males weighing up to two tons. If you want to get up close to these massive creatures then you're in the right place. The zoo offers bison encounters which include the opportunity to hand feed their resident bison Bobby and his half-sister Zipper, who came to the zoo from the wilds in Ohio. Spread around the outside of the bison yard are three simple round cages for barred owls, screech owls, and the southern tamandua. Also called lesser anteaters, the tamandua, like all anteaters, specializes in feeding on ants and termites. However, unlike their giant relatives that we'll see later on our tour, tamanduas are arboreal, spending around 60% of their time in the trees. I'm not sure if they're always exhibited here, since the zoo's tamanduas are also ambassador animals, but back in December, Olive and Franklin here did become new parents, welcoming a male pup who has been named Pimento. Moving past the bison is a side path that leads to a glass enclosed exhibit. We've seen a lot of Canada lynx on my tours, but today I get to shed the spotlight on their cousin the bobcat. Bobcats are in fact another species of lynx and are sometimes known as the red lynx. The name bobcat is actually in reference to their short or bob tails. Bobcats can live almost anywhere including forests, swamps, and deserts and in some areas they are even becoming a common sight in urban environments. Here at the zoo you can stop by and say hi to their resident bobcats Gunther and Mary Jo. Tucked behind the bobcat exhibit is what I'm guessing is the most frequently missed exhibit in the zoo. It was actually the bobcat's former home but now you can find a pair of red foxes, two rescues named Fred and Adeline. Back along the central circle of exhibits is a simple yard for the endangered Chacoan peccary. It started with the arrival of a male and two females in 2019. Since then, at least seven litters of Chacoan peccaries have been born at the zoo, including three last year in 2022, with most, if not all, being born to Mother Peppa and Father Tapo. 
In fact, the zoo's numbers have grown so much that they've split the herd up into two groups, with some of them now living in an adjacent yard that I didn't bother to film since it was empty when I visited. The Chacoan peccary is the most endangered of the three recognized extant species of peccaries, with around 3,000 remaining. They were actually first described through fossil records and believed by scientists to be an extinct species before a living population was found in the mid-1970s. Of course, the native people from the peccaries wild range could have cleared it up very quickly if anyone had bothered to ask them. Moving away from the main group of habitats once again, this new exhibit was constructed last year in the spring of 2022 for common squirrel monkeys, a species that used to be displayed in the learning center found at the entrance of the zoo. And on my visit, I didn't see the squirrel monkey's roommate, the black howler monkey, who've also bounced around a few habitats in recent years, spending 2021 living in the vacated former chimpanzee exhibit, which is now slated to be a new home for lions. Down further are two glass windows that give a view of the indoor home for an iconic reptile we'll see in a moment. And past that are two newly constructed aviaries, the first holds the ivory-billed arasari, a small relative of the toucan native to the tropical forest of South America. The second aviary is a spillover from the small nearby Australian attraction, featuring laughing kookaburras and blue-faced honey eaters. Further down the boardwalk is the outdoor accommodations for the species whose indoor habitat we just previewed, the American alligator. The juveniles live on the right, while on the left you can see Smiley, who is currently around 43 years old. With over 1 million alligators currently living in Florida alone, it's hard to imagine this species was ever at threat of extinction, but that was the case in the early 1900s when alligator populations had fallen dangerously low due to overhunting. Thanks to conservation efforts, they were removed from the endangered species list in 1987, only 20 years after being added to it. And today there is an estimated 5 million American alligators spread out throughout the southeast United States. Our next stop takes us from the swamps of the southeast to the Great Plains with the black-tailed prairie dog. Prairie dogs are actually a kind of ground squirrel named for their distinctive warning calls which sounds like a dog's bark. Black-tailed prairie dogs are actually one of five species of prairie dogs but at least from my experience, they're probably the only one you'll find in a zoo. Completing the side loop, we're back at the America's central cluster of exhibits. The final exhibit in the circle offers a section of glass viewing to give a better look at a popular South American duo, starting with the capybara. One of the animal kingdom's most friendly species, Male Jackson and female Inca live with giant anteaters Joe Hay and Corn Dog, the zoo's pair who did produce a pup in 2017 named Mr. Pickles. He later transferred to another Indiana facility. On my last tour, I shared that a giant anteater's tongue is two feet long. So today I'll add that they are able to flick their tongue in and out of their mouths 150 times in a single minute, which of course helps them quickly feed on large quantities of ants or termites. Next up is a set of three bird perches for the sulfur crested cockatoo, another Australian native, as well as both blue and gold and green winged macaws. For our final stop, we'll need to descend a flight of stairs onto a deck where, peering through the reeds, is an island home for Mexican spider monkeys. Another less common zoo species, which helps make the case for why the Potawatomi Zoo is worth checking out. And now here's a quick look at what's coming to this area in the fall of 2023. Near the Bobcats, the zoo will be adding a new cafe that will have viewing looking directly into a brand new habitat for Andean bears, another exciting addition for the Potawatomi Zoo. Thanks for joining me for my 20th exhibit tour. For this video's question of the day, comment below what upcoming project are you most excited for at one of your local zoos. Usually this would be the part of the video where I include a short teaser of the next exhibit tour, 
but to mix it up, I'm letting you all decide what comes next. So in the next few days, look for a poll here and on Instagram where you can vote for what the next exhibit tour will be.